the Jewish sound, a time to remember, with your host Isaac Resnick, exclusively on 20 High. Welcome, good afternoon. This is the first time to remember. This program is sponsored by Maxi's Discount Butchery. This week they have wonderful specials, lamb chops at 220 rand per kilo, rolled beef 140 rand per kilo, beef goulash 129, stewing lamb at 120 per kilo. Now Maxi's have three wonderful people serving you. There's Maxi Klaus, Trevor Weiner and Warren Klaus. They're on the stripping Glen Hazel in Johannesburg and you can always contact them on their phone number, which is 011-485-1485. Their fax, 011-485-2991. And they're uh, on Facebook as well. And their web, uh, rather their email is maxisdiscount at mweb.co.za. Now, I mean, while I was talking about Maxi's butchery, I remember the time when our parents would go and buy the meat and it wasn't really kosher for you. You would walk into the butcher shop, you'd buy your meat, you had to bring it home and of course then you had to soak it and salt it. You soaked it, you salted it for a half an hour, you soaked it for an hour and then you could use it. And of course if you bought uh, chickens in those days as well, uh, you went to your local sheikhet or I remember the Jeppe Shul, we have a Reverend Spark who was the sheikhet then and uh, you would take your chicken there, he would uh, uh, shecht it for you. And of course, they had to bring it home and you had to pluck all the feathers. And towards the end, you lit a fire uh, and you turned the chicken over the fire to get rid of the other figures, feathers. And of course, you had to um, open up the chicken, take out the insides, uh, the fligula you had to cut, and the helzel. I'm not going to go into all those details in depth but that is how times have changed for the housewife today you just walk into a butcher shop and everything is ready for you nothing to do you just pay choose your product you pay and walk out and all you have to do is either put it in the pot and cook it or in the oven and bake it so those were the days when we had to do everything ourselves and how many of you remember all our houses has those corrugated iron roofs with boiling and freezing in the sea, in, the, in winter and in summer, coal stoves and those what we call donkey boilers to heat the water. These were these geysers. And of course, icy winters in uh, Johannesburg and you sit in front of the coal stove. And I must tell you that the heat from a coal stove is much, 100 times better than an electric electric heater. And of course, you know, we didn't have electric stoves in those days. And we, our parents, my mother particularly, we all cooked on a coal stove. And they used to bake in a coal stove. And it was com some completely different. You know, if you want to compare this as well, if you have a hot cup of tea today and you boil the water in the kettle, it's not the same as you have tea in a summer var. I'm sure many of you know what a samovar is. Uh, it was came from Europe, which was like a brass um, kettle, looked like a kettle, but underneath you put hot coals in to warm the water, to boil the water. And when we had a hot bath in those days, well, as I said, we had what they call those donkey boilers. The water came and was heated by the coal stoves. And of course... I must mention, what about the coal? And these were delivered to us. I remember, I think I have mentioned it, when Shoshana was here two weeks ago by her late grandfather and her father on a horse wagon, going Kaplan's Coal, going around to all the families right, in Dornfontein, in Jeppe, Fordsburg, Mayfair, delivering the coal. And of course, what about those carpets? We didn't have... Uh, the, the, math, the fancy tiles that you have today, we had what they call linoleum floor coverings and you could wash it down. Today you have uh, uh, automatic machines and cleaners, etc. 
but you had to wash it down. And your fresh eggs were laid by chickens in your own backyard. And I must mention as an aside, our toilets were outside in the backyard. Only in the later years uh, when they started to rebuild in Jeppe and in Dorfentin and then moving on to Yeovil were the toilets inside the house as well as the baths that were now being heated by electric heaters. Welcome back. Isaac Resnick talking about a time to remember. And of course this triggered me when I mentioned that the program is with the compliments of Maxi's discount a butchery in Glen Hazel, Johannesburg. And I mentioned the difference between today when you can go into a butcher shop and buy everything ready made, prepared, and in those days we had to come home, our parents, my mother, particularly others as well, I'm sure, remember their parents, they used to soak and salt the meat and the chicken, and with liver as well, put it into the um, oven and burn it as well, over a hot flame as well, to get rid of the blood. And of course, do you remember the famous Nels Russ Dairy, where you used to leave your bottle outside, and you'd put your coupon in the bottle, and they would come along early in the morning, deliver your milk, and you can be sure of one thing, no bottle was ever, ever missing from your veranda or wherever you left it out. And of course, the groceries in those days, you would go to your grocery store, choose them, and they would deliver them by bicycle, uh, but not like today you have your supermarkets, etc., and your hypermarkets. And of course, remember the... Um, Tinkle of the ice cream cart going around the suburbs and how we used to enjoy what they call those lollies and the Newtown Market for lovely vegetables, poultry and colourful flowers. And I remember all our Jewish owners of the grocery stores would on a Tuesday morning all get onto a horse and cart, go into Newtown and buy vegetables and fruit and come back late in the afternoon and each one of them would put their uh, wares on into the shop. So those were the days there were no motorways uh, to get to the reef towns with long distance drives and of course miles of grassland between Johannesburg and Pretoria. Remember the old Johannesburg Road which would take about an hour and a half to get to Pretoria and quite walks in for example Ilovo or remember there wasn't what we call the uh, garden route in Cape Town or even in Johannesburg where you were going in Kalani. You had that wonderful uh, walk around before Kalani was built, which was developed by I.W. Schlesinger. Of course, it was named after Kalani in Ireland where he originally came from. He then went to America. Then he came to Johannesburg. And radiograms, we didn't have what you have today, what you call a, um, cell phones and telephones. And uh, we had a telephone on the wall. And if you wanted to make a telephone call to someone in Cape Town, you booked the call. It was called a trunk call. And the switchboard operator on the other side would say, number out a blief. You'd give her the number in an hour's time. They phoned you back and tell you, the persons on the line. In those days, the switchboards were plug-in boards. I'm sure many of you remember. And of course, radios, we knew them as wirelesses. We'd all sit next to the wireless and listen to the news that would come, they say, from London, particularly during the war years when you had the um, news at six o'clock and you had the chimes of Big Ben. I'm sure many of you know what Big Ben is, is that... Um, clock in the London which strikes on every hour and at six o'clock we would all turn and listen to the latest news what was coming in from Europe and um, as I said we only had telegrams first of all there was the Morse code then telegrams later on you got teleprinters years later you know you've got the faxes and then you've got the emails and today you've got your mobile apps how things have changed and I'm sure we had a better quality than uh, today. And of course, when we traveled, many of our parents, most of them never had motor cars. So if we lived, say, in Jeppe and we wanted to go to a function in Mayfair, we would take a tram 
and then at night the trams would stop. The last tram would say be about 11, but we wouldn't have to bother about that because we would walk all the way back from Mayfair to Jeppe or to Dornfontein or to Yeovil without any fear of any incident at all. No one heard about hijackings, etc. You, ve you didn't even hear about the word called drugs. Of course, there was no gambling. The only thing that ever took place in South Africa, which is that they called it, what wasn't really gambling, but the government of those days, the national government, they were very involved in it, which was the biggest um, money spinner in this country after the mining industry, and that was horse racing. So everybody would go on a, during the week to the tatter stalls and book and um, place bets on the horses, which would take place on a Saturday afternoon. And of course, on a Wednesday afternoon, um, if I remember clearly, at the Turfentin race course, and there was one in Germiston as well. And then at the famous Durban July, later the Rothmans Durban July, and of course you had the one in Cape Town in the summer season as well. And your radio reception was not FM, it was shortwave, and there wasn't any uh, advertising on radio. And on Sunday afternoon, the only radio program that you could listen to was church programs. But, and there was only two programs, SABC 1 and SABC 2. We'll be back. We're taking a break. Ha <laughs> 
Welcome back. If you just tuned in, this is Time to Remember with your host Isaac Resnick. I was talking all about the wonderful days in the past and also about radio. How many of you remember the famous Springbuck Radio? And the first announcer was the one and only Eric Egan. I'm sure you remember him very well. And all those wonderful um, plays that we used to listen to on the radio, those serials. There was the Man in Black. Do you remember that one? The um, Consider Your Verdict. Uh, many others as well. And this is too endless to name. And of course, the Three Wise Men. Remember the Eric uh, Rosenthal and Professor Arthur Blexley and Dennis Glober, who would answer all your questions. And finally, what about the famous Esme Evard, uh, uh, Hospital Tate? And of course, just to tell you that uh, Justin Joffe, uh, one of my co-presenters, will now be presenting, is presenting Eitratson uh, Biku Cholim, which is on the same vein as Esme Esmar used to present. And one final thing I remember, when we went to the cinema, and remember there were three cinemas where they had the organs where when during the interval they would put a slide on the screen and you would sing a song and they, they would play the music with the organist. There was the Metro, there was the 20th century in the plaza. So at the 20th century, you had uh, Dean Herrick. At the uh, Metro, you had Ken Espen. And at the uh, Plaza, you had Jack Dow. And you would sit and listen and sing along. And of course, then they would show you all the, uh, the adverts. And in those days, of course... 90% of the adverts was for cigarettes, which is banned today. For example, remember Rothman's King Size, you know, and also there was Lexington and Men of the World, Smoke Max and CTC. The list is endless. So in my next program, A Time to Remember, we'll take you down memory lane and tell you all about Dolphin Tea. We'll tell you about Yeovil and some other wonderful places where we used to go after eat uh, after a show. Remember, Saturday night was known as Biscope Night in Johannesburg. Thank you for listening. Remember to tell your friends about this. You can get us on www.20high.co.za. Have a wonderful week.